Welcome everyone on presentation related to Mastering Concurrency Volume 1. Uh, this presentation will be about <clears throat> specific issues we can have in concurrent environment like race condition and specifically we will dig inside to the details and describe how the infinity loop can occur within the hash map not since hash map this is a very special case it is just to let you know what could happen what could unleash after uh, not well usage of hash map in concurrent environment and you can have detailed uh, knowledge how it works next topic is about uh, the very common maps which are used in concurrent environment so we will compare them and uh, I will also demonstrate the performance of those maps. And as a bon bonus topic, I have prepared uh, the OS attack on HashMap. We will talk a lot about maps, so this is very interesting to let you know. So let's start with the rest condition and very simple example, what could happen when we are using multiple threads and they access the same map. A very simple example is of a race condition is uh, with if check uh, about containing the same key. And uh, for example, we have two threads, one, uh, thread one and thread two. They are going to put different values with the same key. Yeah. When thread one stops execution here and it is switched to thread two, thread two will pass the check as well. And it depends who will be the next and put the or override the value within the map. It's pretty simple use case and completely valid explanation of uh, rest condition within the hash map. But the second and more complex topic is about infinite loop. Before I start expla explaining the infinite loop, let's talk a little bit about rehashing. So when the rehash uh, is executed, the answer is that uh, the map is calculating the threshold value, which is simple. Uh, new capacity multiplied by, by load factor. So, or capacity multiplied by load factor. If we have default uh, size of the map or capacity of the map 16 is the default and default load factor is uh, 0 0.75, the threshold is 12. So if we are going to put 30 element to the map, uh, rehash is executed of your map. And rehash uh, consists of two methods. Yeah. It is the resize method and the transfer method. In the resize method, we are creating new table which contains your buckets with uh, new capacity, which is basically doubled than previous one. And after this, we are passing this new table to the transfer method, which are going to, which are going to uh, recalculate the, the uh, indexes of your buckets and uh, also transfer all the elements populated in the previous table to the new one. This is the transfer method and uh, let's go line by line to explain what the transfer method does. Yeah, It consists basically from two loops. One is the for loop which are traversing through all the buckets. So the buckets consist of a simple array. Yeah, it is 
fixed array with the with the length, and we have to uh, iterate through it, okay, one, uh, bucket per bucket, and then within we have do while loop, which are transferring every entry within the buckets. Firstly, we are going to the to the array, then we are going uh, and iterate every every uh, entry within the buckets, and the buckets you can you can imagine that the buckets are sort of linked list that every element if we are going from the head of the bucket yeah, is linked to the next. This is where the infinity loop could occur. Imagine or assume that we have this situation. We have the map with size two, low factor is 0 uh, 1.0 and index is calculated by the modulo operand, uh, key modulo length. So if we put to the map uh, two, two values or two uh, entries with the key five, key seven, if we are going to put the third entry with the key three, we are, uh, the, the rehash process is executed, yeah? So in and let's dig into the into the do while loop. Here is important also assume that we have two threads. Yeah. Uh, two threads, two threads, uh, both of them yeah, uh, will execute the rehash process. And the first thread will stops here that we are going to move the element with key three and value A and it stops here after executing this specific line. So in the next element, in the next uh, entry, yeah, we have E dot next, there is uh, simply, we, we stored it there. Uh, after after that, uh, the thread two takes the turn. But uh, to do not, uh, I don't want to mess the uh, marking. So I marked uh, E one and next one because uh, there the TH one ends. So just to be clear, and next, imagine that the thread two uh, takes the turn and the whole rehash is completed. So we can see how, uh, how it looks like after a after, uh, complete run of, of uh, rehashing by thread two. So basically the First, uh, first element with key three is a uh, is processed by the following process. Yeah. Uh, next element to key three is with key seven. So here it is. The index calculated for uh, key three is by the formula key modulo length. So uh, number three modulo length four is three. So it is going to the next to the head like here. But very important line is uh, after we, we got the index is the E next is uh, to the E next is uh, assigned the head of the of the table and this line is because we want to destroy uh, the reference to the next element. We don't need this reference anymore from the next element. So 
we are doing is by that. The idea behind is that after the rehash process, we don't want uh, old references because as you can see, after uh, rehashing, after transferring the, the records, it is in reverse order because we are starting always transferring uh, the elements to the head or from the head. So this line is about destroying previous reference to the next element, yeah. And then we are putting the transferred element E to the head, as I told, that we are starting with the head and we switch the current element uh, as next, yeah. So, and we are doing that uh, while we don't have anything else to transfer yeah, from the previous table. So after uh, rehash within uh, rehash uh, executed by thread one, uh, thread two is completed. Yeah. Imagine that th1 is running again and th1 doesn't know anything about th2 that uh, the rehash is completed. It just started yeah, after this line. So let's explain it line by line. What we'll do th1. So firstly, th1 will take the e1 with key three and uh, we are going, we are uh, calculating new index. We are switching the e next, uh, we are destroying the reference to the next from the e next. Next is uh, stored here. So we are putting the, this element to the, to the uh, from the head to the new table. It is completely new table as I, uh, showcase in the resize method. So we have here uh, the first element transferred. So far, so good. But now we are going to the second iteration. And as a next, we have a record with the key seven with values uh, with value B. We are calculating the index as a next element of 7b. And there is the, the problem. We have set in by th2 the reference to the key three with value a due to this entry. So basically this next one isn't pointing anymore to key five with value seven, but but because of th2, it is pointing back to the key three with value a. So by the result of transferring the element or the entry with key seven with value b is that it is uh, transferred from the head, yeah? The reference is uh, should be like that, but as I explained, that the next element of this entry is pointing back to the key three with value a. Yeah, we have here the uh, the infinite loop. So it is not good situation for us because every time when the CPU, uh, CPU uh, switch back to the thread one, we have inconsistency that we lose the one element and it is it is in the infinity, infinity loop because of this cyclic reference. TH2 uh, is fine. So, 
Yeah, I put uh, some interesting link. You can take a look to repeat the process of how infinity loop uh, could uh, occur. It's a very interesting scenario, what could happen. And now we are all professionals. We know that uh, it is not a good idea to use only a hash map without proper synchronization within your uh, application. So in Java, we have very commonly used uh, uh, maps which are synchronized and prepared for you. There are hash tables, synchronized map, concurrent hash map. In this slide, we can see the main differences. It is uh, if they can have new key or values, but uh, let's focus on the log mechanism at the moment. It's very important that the hash table and synchronous map uh, is working mechanism that basically for the whole map yeah, for you. Synchronous map, it is just the wrapper you can imagine as a wrapper around your map uh, in synchronized uh, block. Yeah. But the third implementation is the concurrent hash map, which loads the portion of, of, uh, of your map. So the multiple threads could access parallelly the, the map without affecting so much the performance because you know that uh, the logs are uh, or uh, the idea behind the locking is to have minimal critical section so you can switch switch uh, the threads in very effective way time effective way uh, I have prepared from this link, country5.com, a nice example of, of comparison between pre-implementation of, of a map in concurrent environment. There's also demonstration how we can use executors and executor service. Yeah. So basically, we have three maps, hash table, synchronized map, which are created by using the collections class and calling synchronized map method while passing the hash map. And the third one is concurrent hash map. In this application, we have uh, two, four loops. And the uh, third loop is just that we are going to run the execution five times. And in the second for loop, we are just uh, creating uh, 10 threads, yeah, because my thread pool is a uh, bit size 10. And we are retrieving and putting value with 500 kilobytes of data. Yeah. So the executors uh, serve us like that we are able to define how many how many threads we are going to, to run. Yeah. In other case, we are going to run 10. And in the in the uh, this for loop, we are executing those threads. Yeah. In the end. We are using executor service shutdown method. And this method uh, just initiates an orderly shutdown in which previously tasks are executed. And no other or new task will be accepted. If we want to terminate this execution, we have to use uh, await termination method because uh, this shutdown method doesn't wait for pre previously submitted task to complete. 
we are doing is by using await termination. And by calling that, it blocks it blocks all task until all task have uh, have completed execution after shutdown shutdown request or the time occurs. Yeah, but we have there almost um, forever waiting time. Yeah. So let's do very simple measurement how the maps performs. So firstly, I'm going to run the hash table. Okay, hash collision map. Oh. Okay. Here we go. You can see that average time is, for example, uh, yeah. for, oh, four seconds and some milliseconds. So there's the hash table. Let's try the synchronized map. It looks slightly better. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, it is three and a half sets average. Yeah. And the concurrent hash map. If you remember the previous explanation that we can parallelly uh, access the, the the map, the concurrent hash map. We should perform the best. And here is the proof. Yeah. But I have to add that there are also some limitation of using concurrent hash map. It is mainly about how many threads you can you can execute at the same time to access the map. Is uh, some limits. Yeah. be aware of that. So that is uh, about the comparison of the commonly used maps in concurrent environment and how we can use executors yeah, to, to fire multiple threats. Yeah. Uh, also, I see here that I, I have forgotten to showcase you the uh, real demonstration of the infinity loop, how you can simulate it you know, within the Java. It's the same uh, as I had on the slides. You can you can just define a uh, map with initial capacity with this, which is uh, two. You can experiment with the low factor. And the idea is that you are you you will fire or execute two threads parallelly, and uh, they trigger the rehash rehash process at the same time. Yeah. But uh, be aware, it it they must uh, <laughs> fulfill specific uh, specific condition. Yeah, that uh, to get the infinity loops. Let's go back to the presentation and to the last topic. We discussed a lot the, the hash map and the hash code collision DOS attack on hash map is something which is uh, not well known as 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 uh, I know. 
So assume that we have string as a key for our hash map. And the question is, how is string hash code calculated okay. in Java? This precondition uh, you need to know if you want to do uh, hash code collision attack. Okay. You need to know what is the key and how is the hash code of the key calculated. So in the in, in Java, you can Google it in seconds. The formula to calculate the hash code of string is following that we are taking the first first uh, character, it it's a C code multiplied by 31 and uh, explanation with the length minus one. Okay. And then uh, you are, you are uh, uh, sum up the every every number. So this is how the hash code is calculating with the Java. And this is the math. Yeah. You can do it. it is the mathematic mathematical problem to solve, but you can calculate which this, which combination of the string has the same hash code. For example, uh, capital A and uh, the small a and uh, capital BB has the same hash code. Okay? And that is that is uh, information which we are, we are going to use yeah, to, to perform hash code collision those attack. Okay, so let's name it somehow. A new class. Let's define two strings. And uh, string B is DB. Okay. Let's multiply it several times. So we have longer string. And just to throw it that they have both the same hash code. Let's go hash code for one and for the second string. Okay, it's building, yeah, you can see it. And there's very simple approach what we can do. We can create so many unique strings which will serve us as a input, as a key to the, to the map, for example, like that. And that is what we want. We have the same hash code, different strings, same hash code. We can combine it. And this is what we want because with the same hash code, uh, we want to achieve that every, every new record to the map is going to the same bucket. Yeah? Or, the, or to a few buckets and performance of, of your map is going down yeah because uh, if we want good uh, good usage to uh, or if we want to have good performance of the map our idea is to have the the elements of the entries distributed across the whole map now we are putting the entries to the same bucket. Okay. So imagine that we are bursting a lot of a lot of inputs. 
yeah, to, to the map and to avoid this functionality yeah is never use user input as a key to your map or you have to be aware of this vulnerability that uh, it could occur yeah and, and bring down the performance of your map also also the good technique to prevent it is to wrap and uh, and enhance the hashing no. so the hashing is not well known to the public that's all from my from my presentation about the first first topic or topics yeah there is a space for your questions so feel free to ask if you have whatever feel free to ping me via slack yeah. i will be happy to answer your questions so Thank you for, for your attention and have, have a nice day.